okay, day two, solving. Some of these are spinoffs of what we did the day before, just taking it and practicing it some more. So don't think it's hard. You can refer back to day one in your foldable if you need to. All right, so let's determine the missing side length first. Before we begin, let's go ahead and draw our two separate figures. I want to make this my largest one. I know that's a 25, that's a 20, and this is a 15. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the smaller one. This is a 9, because it's right here. This is a 12, right there. And this is what I'm looking for, my missing side. So, like yesterday's, I cannot calculate it because I don't have this side length right here. So I'm going to have to actually calculate and set up a proportion. So to set up the proportion, let's do circles and squares. First, I need this one. So that means it corresponds to this one, my largest side. Now, I also need to use one of the other ones. It does not matter which other two you use, 9 and 15 or 12 and 20. I'm going to go ahead and go with 9 and 15. So I'm going to set it up. Circles over squares, squares over circles, 25 over 15 equals to x over 9. And you solve it however you would like. I'm going to simplify and then um, scale factor. That's up to you. I know this 15, 25 over 15 simplifies to 5 over 3. And then I know my scale factor is times 3. Scale factor times 3. So x equals 15. And if I put a 15 right there, I know that is a reasonable answer because that is my longest side. Now remember to go back at this point, at the green point, you could have just cross multiplied. That's 15x equals, and then you're going to have to multiply 25 times 9. Okay, practice from yesterday. Now, first thing you have to ask yourself is if they changed or flipped this object. And in this case, they have. They have flipped the object. So we have to find the corresponding sides. I know this one is my x. So I'm looking for this right angle and this right angle. I know the 5 is corresponding to the 17.5 because those are across from my right angles. And just by knowing my alphabet, I know A, B, C is this order, L, M, N is this order. So I know A, B corresponds to L, M. So that is my circle. So again, um, I'm going to do this time squares over circles, just so you could change it up some. So I'm doing 5 over 4 equals 17.5 over x, and you can cross multiply to solve. Remember, you must write that first step. 5x equals 17.5 times 4, and then solve that. You do not write it just off to the side. Now, you can't go off and just multiply, find some space to multiply. 17.5 times 4. Don't forget to move over for that decimal point. And my answer is 70. So 5x equals 70. I'm not done because i got to solve that one-step equation of dividing by 5. So now I go off to the side. 70 divided by 5. I get a remainder of 0. So that means my final answer is x equals 14. Now, just to make sure you realize, the blue is one answer. The red is a separate answer, and the final answer is a separate answer. Do not leave any of it off. Do not say, this is my red part. Your red part has to be answered as an equation form. This is just scratch work. I don't look at that part. I look at this. Okay, so the next one. 
This one is so easy because they did not flip or turn this at all. It is looking for your height, which is this right here. So I know this corresponds to the 40. And then I have two other ones. I don't want to mess with that decimal, so I'm going to use the 45 and the 20. Now, if you recognize, it is right there. It is set up 45 over 40, 20 over H, your unknown. So that's easy to set up. It is just rewriting it, basically. 45 over 40 equals 20 over H. Do not I forget to identify the top numbers were your squares. The bottom numbers were my circles. That's part of the answer. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I can do. There is no scale factor from 20 to 45. And I can simplify this, but this simplifies to an 8 over 9. So this would be a 9, and it doesn't go in. So I'm going to cross multiply again. 45 times H equals 40 times 20. Now, 4 times 2 just by itself is 8. And you add those two zeros on, and you get 800. And that is 45 H still on this side. Remember, the red part is a must. Do not leave this off. So let's do it off to the side. 800 divided by 45. Okay, so 45 goes into 80 one time. And your remainder is 35. Add the zero. Now 35 was real close to 45, so I know my answer is real close. And I can figure that as a 7. 7 times 45 is 315, and your remainder is, oh, guess what, a 35 again. So when I add that 0, I know that's going to be a 7, and it's repeating. So my third answer to this is x equals 17.7 repeating. Now, if you go back, that is a reasonable answer because, look, 45 is a little bit bigger than 40. So 17.7, a little bit smaller than 20. Those are in comparison. All right, we have a picture, but it's not labeled. So let's read along. At the same time, a 24-foot tree, okay, so let's label 24-foot, put a 24 along that tree, cast a shadow that is a 40-foot shadow. So label that shadow. John, I'm assuming that's John, Measures 10 feet, and his shadow is 10 feet. How tall is John? So this is my unknown. Now, the great thing about these is um, this is how you can measure the height of a building. So that's in real life situation. How tall is this tree? I don't have to get out a yardstick and climb up a tree to measure it. You could just measure using the shadows. So all I have to do is set up my proportion. I'm going to use actually the height over the shadow. So 24 over 40 equals the height of the guy, John, versus his shadow of 40. Now I recognize right away that my scale factor is dividing by 4. That means 1 fourth of its size. So a 1 fourth of that, 24 divided by 4 get you six. So John is six feet tall. Final answer. So again, the red part is part of your answer and the black part is part of your answer. All of it, set it up and solve. Okay, love it. The picture is not rotated. So super easy, draw your lines in between and you have your proportion. So I'm gonna do height over width. Eight over 10 equals 42 over X. So there is no scale factor. I can simplify it, but I'm just going to do cross multiply because I know how y'all like that. So again, write the equation. 8x equals 42 times 10. 
So times 10 is easy. 8x equals 420. You just add that zero on there. Divide by 8. Divide by 8. Now this is the part that you don't have to do, but you just need to sometimes. Divide by 8. Goes into 40 five times. Bring down that zero. Goes in there two times. Four. Oops, not ending, so add a decimal and add a zero. Goes in there five times. So my final answer, x equals 52.5 inches. Again, red is one answer, blue, this blue is one answer, black is an answer, this is scratch. I do not look at that on your test, that is elementary school. But this part is your one step, that's what makes it higher level, do the equation.